Hey guys, I recent found this cool exploit in TF2 where you can make a sentry that builds super fast and give your engineer more health. First, go into your backpack and find the gunslinger item, and equip it on your engineer. Look, now you have 150 health, and when you build a sentry, it builds super fast and only cost 100 metal. Now you can use this to troll scouts and rocket jumping soldiers. You can use the extra health to survive 1 vs 1 fights more often. Please subscribe and like this video if you have fun trolling with this strategy. Yeah, the gunslinger might seem like cheating when you're on the other end of it, and yeah, I will admit that just like any other weapon used effectively, it can be frustrating to play against. But I don't think the gunslinger is an overpowered weapon, I don't think that it's even the most annoying weapon in the game by a long shot. I do, however, think that it's the most useful unlock that the engineer has at his disposal. So let's just take a look at these stats here. Equipping the gunslinger gives you an extra 25 health, bringing the engineer up from 125 to 150 total health. It allows you to build disposable mini sentries that build three times as fast as regular sentries, but only have 100 health and can't be upgraded. The Gunslinger's robotic arm is also now used as your melee weapon, and you can punch people. Uh, you don't get random crits, but the third consecutive punch in a row will always be a critical hit. So right away, the most noticeable thing about the Gunslinger is that the stats are extremely unique. So I'm gonna discuss this thing by going over each of the three stats individually, starting with the triple punch there is a cool trick you can have do with the gunslinger where you punch an enemy three times and then you get a crit. First you need the gunslinger and some unaware enemies. Sneak up behind them and just start punching. If you punch for long enough, you might get a crit. This is epic trolling. Leave a like and comment a favorite in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell or else I'll die. Obviously the triple punching thing isn't something you'll want to be primarily doing as the gunslinger provides many more upsides than just rewarding consistently hitting your melee swings. But you know, if you have the opportunity to try for a crit punch, you might as well just go for it if you're in a pinch. Uh, the next thing to talk about regarding the gunslinger is probably the most memorable thing about it. It's ability to build mini sentries instead of regular sentry guns. These miniature combat sentry guns actually have a few unique stats of their own that you can keep in mind when comparing which type of sentry would be more useful in the current situation. First off, mini sentries can't be upgraded. They will always remain the same size no matter how much you punch them. In fact, upgrading is the only thing that doesn't happen when you hit a mini sentry with your melee weapon. You can, however, still boost, repair, and refill its ammo. When you place down a mini sentry from scratch, it actually starts out with 50 health, and as it builds, it gains 50 more health to sit at a maximum of 100 health. This is comparable to regular sentry guns, which start out at 1 health and build all the way to 150 health, albeit three times slower than a mini sentry by default. The other main difference between a baby sentry and a daddy sentry is that you don't get back any metal from the gibbs of a destroyed mini, which makes it slightly harder to keep slamming them down over and over again. The damage per second, or DPS, of a mini sentry is a cool average of 48, due to it shooting six bullets per second and each of these bullets doing eight damage each. Compare this to the DPS of a level one sentry gun, which shoots bullets that do twice as much damage but slightly slower, but all coming out to be a a higher average DPS in the end. But what makes mini sentries the most useful in addition to the fact that they're small and build quickly is that they're relatively cheap. The most expensive building the engineer has in his PDA is always his sentry gun, but the gunslinger changes that, creating a viable area denial option at the same affordability as a dispenser. This allows the engineer to put his sentry gun up fast and is able to replace it often when it inevitably gets destroyed due to its low health. Now, mini sentries do seem to be one of those negative memes within the community, mostly among the people who are affected by it most, like Scar out players who can't seem to comprehend why there would exist a counter to the unbelievable freedom and mobility that the class allows them to have, but I think the whole anti-mini sentry thought process is kind of outdated at this point, especially since, one, the gunslinger was changed a while ago to be much less spammable since it doesn't build and auto heal itself from 100 health right off the bat like it used to, and two, the mini sentry hate bandwagon was popularized by someone who has just as much respect for the necessary class counters as he does for the community who got him the amount of popularity he has today. That being said, the mini sentry nowadays seems to have a lot less abuse directed at it from people who can't seem to do 100 damage to a stationary object, but it's certainly not without abuse. In fact, I think that even after nerfing the whole slam and spam space jam thing that people used to do with minis before gunmetal came along and forced that kind of playstyle out of viability, a lot of engineer players still think that they can get away with placing a sentry gun down right in front of their enemy every time with success. And sure, a distraction mini sentry as you attempt to take an unexpected 1v1 or make a daring escape is always a reasonable 
patentable tactic to ensure your own survivability, but all it does is turn that miniature server-side aimbot into a cannon fodder that your enemy might have to spend one second shooting a rocket at instead of you, which can sometimes be enough to put you in an advantageous spot, but more often than not will be a waste of resources. I think that the most effective way to use the mini sentry is to treat it like a more aggressive regular sentry gun that you don't have to babysit. What I'm talking about here is placement. Yes, mini sentry location is just as important as the placement of any other building. The goal should always be to make sure that by the time your enemy sees your sentry gun, it's already built. You want to avoid placing the mini sentry down where the enemy can shoot at it while it's still building because that's when it's the most vulnerable. It has at least half as much health and it can't defend itself. So basically, think one step ahead of your enemy and place your gun accordingly. With regular sentry guns, it's usually going to be more of a long-term investment and it's much slower to set up. So for regular sentry gun placement, you usually have to be like two or three steps ahead of your enemy for to be the most effective, but since the mini sentry builds so fast, you can easily be just as effective by placing it around a corner. You know your attacker is just around and bait them into it, so they're caught in this 2v1 where one of the things shooting at them has perfect aim. If you were to have the same positioning with a regular sentry gun, you'd just get punished more often since you're getting caught in a position where your gun only has 50 more health and can't be replaced as easily. Not to mention having a level 1 sentry gun as your backup can be effective, but if you're going for the long-term investment, you're going to be more inclined to just try and keep the sentry gun alive which means that you're not only going to be focused on healing your sentry instead of shooting at the assailant, but you're also going to have to be standing next to your sentry gun as it's getting fired upon, which puts you in the way of taking collateral damage from rockets and stickies. With a mini sentry, there's no reason to try and tank it when you're trying to go for a 2v1, so the first thing that you should be doing is putting distance between yourself and your mini. It is much easier to kill an engineer and his sentry gun when they are near each other, especially with explosives. If you force your enemy to shoot in two different directions at once, you automatically have the advantage because, well, you can't shoot in two directions at once if they're 10 feet apart. So take advantage of that. The last statistic to talk about regarding the gunslinger is that when you equip it, it increases your maximum health from 125 to 150, which seems like a menial addition to this weapon, but even considering the extremely useful mini sentries by your side, I believe that this stat in particular has the most impact. With only 25 more health, you can now stay in fights longer, which is something that a wrench engineer can't really do simply because his health is too low. Bringing the engineer out of the light class pool allows him to have more survivability, which is insanely important for a class whose basic effectiveness revolves around staying alive longer. If you think about it, the engineer is essentially a slower scout who plays the supportive role, and that support only gets stronger and more effective the longer he's left to his own devices. So of course, it would be much more important for a class who basically gets stronger the longer he's alive to have better survivability. That's one of the main reasons that Medic has class-specific mechanics that keep him alive for longer, such as health regeneration. With these tools, the Medic is a frontline support class who can afford to take a couple shots here and there, and the engineer adopts that concept when he equips the gunslinger. So, what is it all about? How does the gunslinger stack up to wrenches? When is the best time to use it? Does the engineer always have a robotic arm and equipping it is as simple as taking off his glove? These are all great questions, and I plan on answering most of them. The gunslinger is such a cool unlock because it almost turns the engineer into a completely different class. In fact, this concept has a name in TF2, a subclass, trading a basic class role for another one, essentially creating a new class. You trade the sturdiness and resilience of a well-placed level 3 sentry gun for a little bit more sturdiness and resilience of your own. You trade the power of a stationary killing machine with perfect aim for the opportunity to be an adaptable killing machine dependent on your own skills with a shotgun. It allows you to become more reliable. It allows you to be more aggressive. The Gunslinger encourages the ultimate anti-turtle playstyle, the Battle Engineer. So where does the Gunslinger shine the most? Well, I personally think that preference heavily plays into choosing between a robot arm and an oversized wrench, but in general, the more time you have to build, the better of an idea it is to use a wrench, and the less time you have to build, the better of an idea it is to use the Gunslinger. But overall, I think the Gunslinger can be most effectively applied to a general arena in Team Fortress 2. Yes, it's a pretty wide game type to be applying yourself to, but if there's one thing I've learned from playing TF2 in public servers for all these years, it's that more often than not, everyone is out for themselves and will hardly ever attempt to assist their support classes. And this is just the unfortunate reality of public servers, and it always will be. Effective teamwork, playing together, protecting support classes, it's all found once in a blue moon in casual mode because it's, well, casual. Very few people are concerned with their own teammates because most people are usually just trying to see how big of a kill streak they can get, or just 
just exploring the layout of the map for the first time. For the engineer, a class that is highly dependent on being protected from spies who can harass his buildings, soldiers who repeatedly shoot at his sentry gun from outside of its range, overextending demo men who can just walk up and throw pipes around the corner at his stuff without getting punished, assuming a sentry dependent, stationary, vulnerable, supportive role can get frustrating when no one is willing to help you establish yourself. The gunslinger is the answer to this problem. If you want a job done right, you just have to do it yourself. So taking your own self-protection and self-sustainability into your own hands is usually the only reliable option, and the gunslinger makes that option much, much easier. Take it from me, if you're just sick and tired of your teammates not giving two freaking fucks about the engineer being alive while he tries to build them the dispenser that they keep desperately asking for, start working on your shotgun aim. My aim with a shotgun is actually pretty subpar compared to most high-level players, but I've been recently making it a priority to get better at it simply because I've always been so sentry dependent while playing a class that is teamwork dependent. And if you can't seem to keep up a sentry nest because everyone on your team decides to leave you alone with the sapper happy spies and you're stuck with a rescue ranger and a, and a sentry gun that costs 330 metal and takes 30 seconds to fully upgrade, just switch to the gunslinger and just start meat shotting people. You'd be surprised how less stressful it is to be the big, strong, independent cyborg Texan who don't need no pie bro. You just have one less building to keep babysitting and instead of praying that the default heavy on your team decides to actually look up and shoot the parachuting soldier hovering above everybody, you can just go ahead and shoot him out of the sky yourself. So, this has been my review of the gunslinger. I hope you enjoyed Use our angler to bullet jump to funny places. Isn't it super funny to use this specific taunt in a high place? Epic trolling. If you don't subscribe, I'll get the Russian mafia to hack your TF2 account and delete your strange rescue ranger.